morning, it's Tom with Heritage. Uh, today we're looking at some heating controls for a customer that um, apparently have never worked. So the upstairs radiators don't get hot. It's had under four heating installed, uh, which is either always boiling or freezing. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna do a bit of fault finding, see if we can find out uh, what's going on, get the heating working properly for them. We're going to put the hot water onto a heat miser, a hot water controller, uh, and we're going to install a thermostat upstairs, a heat miser thermostat upstairs, so that everything's on the same system. Let's see how it goes. Right, so we've got a UH8 wiring centre. Um, what have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. 11 heating loops, um, pretty badly labelled up. So part of the job today is just uh, we're going to fire up these um, zones one at a time. We've got four stats downstairs doing some underfloor heating. Um, sorry, five, five stats doing some underfloor heating downstairs. And so we just need to make sure that the right zone is paired with the right loop or set of loops. So it's just off at the moment, just letting everything cool down and then we'll crank these zones up one at a time. We'll go through and label them properly just to make sure they're, they, you know, the actuators are in the right order. Second piece of the puzzle. Um, where are we? Nice tidy worker, as you can see. So the hot water was controlled by this generic timer. And the customer wanted this going on a heat miser system. So they've got the you know the hub already on the app. So we wanted hot water control through the heat miser app, so we've just done that. Here's the sort of wiring centre, we just need to tie this up a little bit. Um now the upstairs radiators, you see we've got a zone valve for upstairs heating ra uh, upstairs radiators we've got a zone valve for uh, underfloor heating and we've got a zone valve there for the hot water so we've just connected this up um, and just tested it out so it obviously calls for calls for heat down here it goes through the safety thermostat on the hot water cylinder comes back it then tells the valve to open once the zone valves open that then fires up the boiler and that comes on and off as uh, you know according to the uh, program settings that you make either on the device or in the app so that's the first piece of the puzzle done the next piece of the puzzle we had a battery powered thermostat upstairs um, again just a generic thermostat which uh, was sending signal down this three core to fire the boiler when heat was required upstairs or the customer saying that um, the radiators weren't getting hot upstairs or it, you know it wasn't getting up to temperature so here you could see these are the live switches once the zone valves close that sends voltage down these orange cables that black that you can probably just see running along the back there, down this flex, that's the switch live to the boiler. This black here from this uh, grey flat three core cable, you see that goes onto the voltage in of the zone valve and then it would return on one of these uh, orange cores once the valve had closed and then voltage onto the boiler. Um, I'm going to stick one of these heat miser neos upstairs. These need, we see, a live and a neutral, um, which this wasn't actually getting, uh, you know, 230 volt live, and there's no neutral up there at the moment because it was battery powered. So I just need to redo this cable, 
you know we've got a permanent supply here we've got a neutral here we've got earth or cpc here and then this black switch coming back can actually stay where it is because then that will open the open the valve once uh, sorry close the valve uh, yeah open the valve <laughs> open the valve and close the switch in the valve and once that's done we'll fire the boiler up so just a little bit of rejigging here but then hopefully that should do the switching so let's just get that done and just before we go and connect the new star um customers saying that uh, upstairs didn't seem to be getting uh seems to be getting hot and like i say it's it's a battery powered thermostat upstairs and it's the camera all focus the on switches so you see we've got new, a live neutral terminal and then one two three four other terminals on the back of here okay so hot water when uh, the timer is calling for hot water it will put voltage onto number three when it's calling for heating it will put voltage onto number four now if this programmer as i think it was was maybe set to off here and even if the little battery power thermostat Was calling uh, on the black core here. The other brown core would have been used to pick up voltage from the old timer. If that's if that's never on, it's never going to get that voltage. It's never going to fire the boiler up. So I think that's probably why the radiators weren't getting hot upstairs. All right, so I've got my trusty mega here on continuity. And I've just linked out what I presume to be this cable, the CPC and the black core upstairs. And we need to make sure that we've got continuity there, which we have. I've also checked it, CPC to the brown core, just to double check, because with heating control stuff, um, sometimes it's a 230 volt signal, sometimes it's 12, 24 volt, and you don't want to be mixing those up because we've come to many of these panels before that have been blown to smithereens because voltage has been put onto the wrong contact. Just wanted to double check that that was the right cable before, <laughs> before uh, connecting up this new stat. Right, so we're gonna be using this wiring diagram. Permanent live, permanent neutral put a live on to 230 volts onto A1 and then when the boiler uh, when the sorry when the thermostat is calling for heat it'll put voltage down the black core back to our wiring center so because this can be used as a volt free pair of contacts I just need to put a little link in between line and A1 so you see on the far left there we've got all our neutrals um, Next one over is all our feeds, our permanent uh, permanent lives, 230 volts. It always makes me a little bit nervous when there's all these cables crammed into these um, terminal blocks. So what I'm gonna do is just, there's a couple over here, um, eight and nine that aren't being used. So let's see, I'll just put a new neutral in there and I'm gonna put a new live in there and just try and spread these out a little bit just so it's not overcrowded in that one terminal block. It just makes it really easy to, you know, I've just pulled this one out of the neutral. You see it's been screwed down onto the insulation and there's a few, a few stray strands of copper. So let's just try and sort this out a little bit. All right, so just have a look inside the boiler there. It's one of these lovely Worcester Bosch boilers. The, um, pump here is just stopping this door from dropping down so it's a bit awkward what i just wanted to do is make sure that uh, we're dealing with I mean, obviously i've just changed the um, 
the hot water controller, that's a 230 volt signal. Just before I fire up the thermostat, just wanted to make sure there's no low voltage stuff going on, extra low voltage stuff. And now that's you. You can see a little picture of a hot tap, and then underneath the black cable is a little picture of um, a radiator. So in this setup, we've got a you know a big hot water tank doing the hot water. So we're not using the the tap input as it were. Um, we've not got on demand hot water here. It's a it's a hot water tank. So that uh, that yellow or orange orange yellow set of connections they are 230 volt connections so that is a live switch going back to the boiler and unlike some boilers which are an absolute pain in the neck to get at the connections no tools required for this it's that clicks down like that lock it in place and that clicks into place so you just press these little flaps Pull that down and then the lid just hooks on and clips in as well. So it's really nice to work on. Right, so we've got the stat calling upstairs for the upstairs radiators now. Pump's going. You see there's no resistance on that zone valve, which means that's open. So that's for the radiators upstairs. Let's just get our meter out, so where are we? We've got the permanent going to the thermostat. You can hear there's voltage there. And then we've got the black coming back here, that snaked one. We've got voltage there and then goes off to the zone valve. There's a switch in the zone valve that closes. And we've got voltage there. And then that straight black cable goes to that uh, terminal on the boiler that we were looking at before for, for heating. So rads are getting nice and warm upstairs, so I'm happy with that. Um, next thing, we just need to add these two new devices to the heat miser app. In the meantime, I'm just going to start uh, asking the thermostats to call for heat, just make sure the right actuators open. I mean, I'm taking this labelling as, as, as fact, but hopefully what will happen is, you see the lounge has got one, two, three, four heating loops on it, all in this zone four. So I'm just going to go to the lounge or the living room. I'm going to turn on the start, you know, ask it to call for heat. Hopefully we'll see these four open. I'm going to leave it for an hour or so, come back, just feel the temperature of the floor, make sure that uh, every part of the lounge floor is getting hot. Right, so I've just uh, satisfied the start upstairs. So you can hear there's no heating going on. Water's not been pumped. Oh, there's a bit of resistance on that zone valve. So if you push it, And then it snaps back like that, it means it's closed. Let's just go back over here. So, yeah, the stat's still got, uh, you know, permanent, uh, you know, permanent live there, so it can actually function and a neutral. If we just go here, there's nothing there now. There's nothing there. So everything's satisfied at the moment. So this is the living room. And there we go, we've got a bit of a problem there. So zone five has come on. Um, zone five has just got this one actuator in it. And I have no idea what that says on it. So anyway, that's wrong. So the 
thermostat that's in the living room is opening an actuator that goes elsewhere. So somewhere else in the house will be getting hot. I'm gonna leave that open and let's just see if we could find out where it's getting hot. Right, so next, uh, next piece of the puzzle. Now, I've never seen these actuators before. Um, usually an actuator looks like that when it's open and when it closes off this this bit will recess down and become flush with this top surface i've just noticed that when i turned well what i thought was zone four on turns out it's zone five completely different actuator these are the the flow rates so really if this is the only actuator that's open or opening this should be the only loop that's showing flow whereas all these were showing that are flowing so just looked at, <laughs> looked at the instructions for these and i think these just pull out i think they should be we'll have a go at this when i put the camera down but i think these should be removed when it's uh, installed so let's just have a go with that and there we go <laughs> No wonder the house is always boiling, so when any any of this calls for heat, all of these loops are open, and so it'll be heating the whole of the downstairs. So let's just, uh, there's a few things to sort out here, isn't there? We need to just make sure that uh, we've either swapped these actuators around into the right actuator slots or swap the um, thermostat inputs. Uh, to correspond with the relevant outputs. But let's take all these, these actuator uh, retainers out first, shall we? All right, so our erroneous zone five is calling for heating now. Can you see that actuator is standing proud? Here's your flow rate. All of the others are now closed off because all of the actuators closed off all right so that's that bit done let's get on with uh, sorting these out all right I'm hoping this is uh, the problem that I was having or the, the, the reason for the problem um, I've just been going through and asking the staff to call for heat and yes as written here zone one is the hall zone two is the utility Zone four and five were mixed up, but I'm just gonna sort these out now. Zone three, the kitchen, and it wasn't calling for heat, even though the you know the stat wasn't satisfied. The actuators weren't, you know, getting a signal from here. And I think it's because it's very easy to drop these cables behind the cable clamp, tighten it up, think you've got a connection, but actually it's not touching anything. So let me just put that in place and then we'll see if the kitchen calls for heat. So yeah, when, you, when you're doing these, the screwdriver in there, yeah, you see that's really tight and, where are we, there we go. You sort of see it opening now. So if that's not fully open, it's very easy to get the cable behind the cable clamp and therefore it won't make any contact. Let's just get that in there. Screw that in. Let's give it a tiny tug test. Yeah, that's in place now. Let's give that a go. Cool, so now we can see zone three, the kitchen, lights on, it's calling for heat. So it was just that loose connection. All right, so I've just spent a little bit of time just tidying up the UH8. It was a bit of a, with all due respect, a bit of a plumber's job. I wouldn't be able to do the pipe work. They're not quite as good as the wire, at the wiring. <laughs> anyway, so this was a bit, this was, uh, you could see they tried to fix it with one, two, three, four, five, six screws. I'll just put it in properly with a couple of screws. It's nice and solid now. Just rerouted these cables at the back. 
so that they're coming in the right order and they're not crossing over each other. Um, yeah, just makes it a little bit easier to maintain and see what's going on. And then all of these uh, actuator cables, which we always find them sort of looped over the top, just dangling over all this. Just tuck them behind, uh, shorten them a little bit, just so they're not you know, flapping around and if someone comes to inspect and catches hold of one and pulls the board off the wall, etc. And then these cable grips, just pinch a couple of screws from places where they're not being used just to keep these cables nice and tight. Right, so we're all done and dusted, covers back on. Just labeled these zones uh, for the customer's reference. Um, everything's a little bit tidier. Well, apart from all my rubbish down here, which is getting tidied in a minute. Yeah, we're just taking the customer through a little bit of functionality of the actual app and the devices, which um, they didn't get a handover at the time of buying the property. It's a new property. So yeah, there we go. So there you go, we hope you found that informative. There's lots to digest there. The radiators weren't working upstairs. The whole house was either boiling or freezing. Um, so yeah, we've put the upstairs radiators onto the same heat miser. Under, uh, same heat miser system as the underfloor heating. Put the hot water on the same system, so it's all on the customer's phone. Um, sorted out the problem with the actuators. Should have probably spotted that when I first got there, but there you go. What else did we have? Oh yeah, just neatened up the wiring centre a little bit. Um, make it easy for the next person that maybe has to come along to maintain it. And yes, yeah, sorted out the problem with the thermostat paired with the wrong uh, heating loop. So as always, if you need any help with your heating controls in your property, then don't hesitate to give us a shout. Don't forget to hit like, like and subscribe. Until next time.